Hello and welcome to Useful Editing Helpers and Backup, another plugin review for Obsidian. Uh, we will talk about today some useful editing helpers, editing toolbar, the emoji toolbar, icon shortcuts, and the front matter tab suggests that you will see that those wrap together give us a quite nice editing experience for the average user. And then uh, also a backup solution, which is auto backups, the former Dropbox backups plugin. Um, and this is also what we start with. So when you go into your community plugin settings and browse for the plugins, you can get auto backups. And then when you enable it, you are getting asked to uh, allow authorization. And this is because Auto Backups directly writes the data to your Dropbox account. So Auto Backups is a Dropbox backup. And you just log in if you are not logged in, and then you allow writing to it, and then you can op open Obsidian again, and then Auto Backups is done. There is nothing really to configure, except if you want to exclude binary files everything which is not MD, org, and text, and most people don't want that. Um, there's two things to look out for. A, the configuration of auto backup is being saved in a little uh, file, which you normally not see, and this is uh, showing the little files. It's the Dropbox backup token store, and you will not find it in the vault for myself because that's my authentication token, right? Uh, every tool which accesses uh, a different other tool needs to be able to authenticate. And this is how uh, most people, most tools are doing it. They save it somewhere and it's specific to that uh, specific uh, plugin. So if you want to distribute your vault, don't distribute this. Otherwise, people are using your backup. The other thing is that coming back to the web page is that it will use Dropbox directly. So that's a pro and it's a con because you every backup will go into apps and then Obsidian backup. And then in there you will find a lot of um, vaults. So at the moment, the vaults from, um, I have my vaults in there. They, the English wall isn't there yet because after 10 minutes it will uh, do the backup. So after 10 minutes after starting and then every 20 minutes um, the plugin will make a backup. And this is the, the the drawback really, more or less. It is doing backups, nothing else. So you get work, which is my work, my old work. That's my testing one. But you have the English wall here, 2022. Months 11, day the 12th, and then you see it did already do some backups because I'm recording this after I did the rest of the explanation. And it's unique. And in there you will find all of the files you had and with the version, and then you can download it. And that's the drawback, really. You need to know where the node is to, to, to restore it if it's thing, but it did cover my uh you know what i mean already several times by as i deleted the note which i needed back or when i made too many changes and i don't have uh the i don't have the uh, history plugin enabled in um, obsidian because that doesn't work for me and um, yeah that's the drawback so from time to time you should go and clean up this area and also you probably want to exclude obsidian backups from being downloaded to your local Dropbox. Because otherwise you're just getting a lot of notifications if you have enabled that or yeah, it, it keeps on going. On the other side, it makes it easier. You don't have to accept the web, web interface. Um, it's up to you. Okay, so now we have seen how auto backups works, pros and cons. Let's take a look at the next plugin. And as you notice, we're going from the bottom to the top the front matter text suggest plugin, which is quite nice. 
Um, at the moment, I have two tags, and I have my tagline in the jungle front header. But when I start typing, um, and I use the correct thing, I, I don't get any suggestions. And then this is really where the font matter to this plugin comes in. You can do a tag, and this is a tag, and, and select it. The problem is you then need to go and remove the hashtag again. Because in the YAML front header, you're not using the hashtags. So that's where front matter texture just comes in. Very nice plugin, very easy. You just need to enable it. And then you are ready to go. And you can type, uh, this is a tag. There's a little bug with it. Let's go on that way. Um, for example, if you have an array already defined, and you start typing, it doesn't show up. Easy thing is do a tab, space, and then stop typing. So always space, start typing if it's not showing up directly, and then it works. Quite easy. That's what it does, and it works. And I use it all the time, really. The other point, uh, nice plugin is icon shortcuts, emojis, and everything like that. So what it allows you to do is to do um, a colon and then you can type book and then it brings up open books. You can also do a plus um, and open something like that, uh, fuzzy matching. Um, as you can see, that it's quite nice. And the other nice part about it is that you can configure additional um, emojis or icons even by yourself. So um, let's take a look at that. And it's the icon shortcuts tool, and by default it's double, uh, it's colon or double colon if you do full bytes. You cannot change that, and there is a very important fact, and this is trigger with trailing space. You should enable that because otherwise, every time you type something and do a colon, like a, 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 a inline field, or you just want to say, oh, this is colon, and it triggers this. Um, this behavior. So I always check training with white space. And I also add a space after and into the shortcode so that I don't have to then do space again. It's already done. Ease it up. I only lose the little seed icon pack um, and the built in official icons, and that's enough. You can add more. Um, but if you add more, be warned that it can slow down loading of Obsidian. So you should really decide what which icons you want uh, and, and what you need for typical typing. And if you need to have something specific, you can always do other ways to just insert one little icon, right? Uh, you can also create custom icon packs. Uh, it's in the description on the web page. So you can use your own icons if you want to, to insert it into the um, uh, with this feature. Very nice thing. Um, like I said, I only use Lucid and the Obsidian button icons, and that's enough for me. There's one drawback with Icon Suggester, and I will link in the description the, the cheat sheet for all of those nice things like book and so on. So, by the way, I, it needs a space, and then it will take it. So, that's the problem. Perhaps a drawback. Um, you can see the icons here. And then the other, but what about if I don't know what I'm looking for? Like I look for thought, uh, and then it's fuzzy, so it's quite okay, but uh, yeah, I don't like that. So on top of using icon shortcuts, I also use the emoji toolbar. And the emoji toolbar can trigger with a hotkey, but I always use just the emoji picker because too many hotkeys, uh, I'm forgetting them. And then you have a little emoji selector, uh, which is what, what I really like about it. And you can do animals, footerings, like the typical uh, categories you, you know, frequently use, and you can search for it like uh, thought. This is not fuzzy, so pros and cons, like always. But I can browse through it. And then I can just pick it and it will be in inserted into it. Um, the drawback of it is it doesn't have 
the extensibility like a shortcut has. So I use both for those shortcuts where I, I know and I, I type and it makes it easy to fast edit it and, and insert the icons into it like a book. Um, I just do colon book and then for other things where I don't really know which emoji I would like, I do it with the emoji toolbar. And then for any specific icon, I probably look it up uh, and, and then see if it really needs something like that. So we are almost done. And the uh, last one, but not least, is the editing toolbar. And I disabled that you probably have seen it in, in the plugins because it is showing up nicely and directly. So let's enable it. The editing toolbar is based on CMenu. CMenu hasn't been updated for a long time and uh, Kuman did a great job on enhancing CMenu. Uh, CMenu was a little modal floating on the bottom and uh, editing toolbar by default goes to the top, but it doesn't just have things like header to and so giving you the the word or pages or whatever experience of a toolbar if you don't know Markdown, but it also has sub menus or drop down so you can put things together how you like it and then use those to to bring it up it has coloring it has background color so highlighting it has a brush and so on very great plugin in my opinion um, and you can configure it even a lot more. So when you go into edit the toolbar, you see where it is either workspace or body. Body is being useful for um, sliding panes, which we don't really have anymore. Um, I haven't really seen any difference between them. The aesthetics, you can say default, glass or tiny. Uh, let's try glass for the next time. And then where it is on the top, following or fixed. Again, take a look what, what you what you want and let you see, um, and then you can press the refresh and it will then change it to, um, so like this is the old CMenu style. I don't really like it. I, I, I use it on, um, on the top. Uh, let's stay following also to show what that let's look like. This is the refresh, very nicely done. Um, and then it is gone. You can do here, hide and show. Oops. Don't. And it just did show up quickly. I don't think that works. Um, oops, no, stop. Yeah, and there it is. Um, yeah. Try it out. It also depends a little bit on the on the uh, themes you have, right? What is featuring best? And then you have here you have the the commands, which is already done. You can drag and drop them to create sub menus. Um, you can delete them. You can edit them. You can change um, the command name. You can change the icons, uh, built-in icons, and, and others. And you can add to the list. I don't need full screen focus or workspace, so I would normally delete them. And then uh, I do something like uh, oops, move to move current tab to um, current tab to a new window, and I have it already in there. So. Um, I can just click on it now and it will create a new window right directly and um, then it shows up there and I can use that with other things and uh, there's also a little bug if you don't have a note open in the main menu and you are using the, the window on the side and you are going into the settings and prob sometimes the, the, the toolbar goes away just open up a note in the main menu again and then comes back. So it's quite okay. Um, yeah, there's one thing which uh, Kuman shows on his webpage on the GitHub, which I, I really like. 
but it doesn't work at the moment. I'm waiting for um, for feedback there. Uh, is integrating the toolbar. Oh, come on, go up. Uh, the emoji toolbar in it. And move that to the top. Let's go back into So we now we have the emoji picker there. You could click on it and that it doesn't work at the moment. Um, yeah, let's wait and see what, what, what comes back from him and I will then update my notes about it. Um, yeah. There's one important thing to note and this is that a lot of those formattings are marked down, right, like H2. Right, you can mark it and then you say H2, so it becomes a header. But other things are, when you go from font colors and pick red, are HTML. And that's the, the limitation of Markdown, right? Markdown itself doesn't have the option to specify something as red. Um, you need to use HTML code and the toolbar does that for you. But keep in mind that this is now HTML code. So when you're browsing it, like here, we say, oh, what's this? Oh, uh, I'm, right. And this is with some other things also, like the um, capability to say right, left, and so on. And you already see the, the code syntax in there. Just keep in mind that you don't delete them or that you only ch uh, change the values inside of the Gänsefüßchen, uh, <laughs> the, the dashes, right? Because otherwise you break it when you edit it manually. Other than that, I think it's a quite nice thing, especially when you have something like this and you want to go, go along and have easy editing. Um, and you see you have a code block, edit this block, and then you can do it this way. Um, so make sure that you stick to the part between the, the carrots. That's not carrot, it's a uh, smaller sign, a bigger sign. And then uh, you're fine. And otherwise, you can always use this. And there's also a clear formatting function in there. Very nice, useful tool for editing common text. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the brief presentation of those plugins. And um, if you have any questions, feel uh, leave a comment in the video. There is also again a blog post on my blog, which you can find easily by going using the link or just using the 40-02 in the search. And there is also this vault again being updated on GitHub, which is also in the comments, right? And description. You will find the information in the description. Okay, thanks a lot. See you later and bye.